There are many countries in the world today and that make the nations that make up these countries unhappy. There are dozens of topics. From these countries imagine a country like that. They are behind the world in education and production and industry to the world market. They cannot influence. Also in art. It has no contribution to the world in sports or science. Almost all people lives close to the poverty line. Most importantly, life safety in Afghanistan and human rights have no weight in other words. People luckily they survive. They live as if something bad is going to happen to them at any moment. This place has almost never had a quiet life throughout history. Chaos and it is a country of civil wars. A place where America and the Taliban have harassed the natives for years. This is the world's highest mountain range and of Central Asia stays in the south. Everywhere with the dangers of ignorance. And poverty rap country. Maybe most I'm talking about the country where unhappy people live. This is Afghanistan. When Afghanistan is mentioned, most of us do not think of good things and none of us wants to visit Afghanistan. Get to know its culture or live there. The most important reason for this is that Afghanistan has been under the influence of forces such as the Soviet Union and the Taliban since the past. In the 1970s, the Soviets fought hard to protect their authority in Afghanistan and caused conflicts in these lands. Afghan local organizations repelled the Soviet Union. And in 1989, the Soviet occupation completely withdrew from the country. However, the people of Afghanistan were not only struggling with external problems, but also with a dangerous organization that did not recognize the rules of civil law and was against a democratic government with weapons in their hands. This organization became even more active. After the Soviet withdrawal from the country, it took over the country in 1996, when the date showed September 11th, 2001. A big explosion occurred in New York City, USA. What makes this event relevant to Afghanistan is that it was undertaken by organizations of Afghanistan origin. After this incident, the USA intervened in Afghanistan's internal affairs for many years, and the activities of the Taliban decreased. Despite the election of a democratically elected president to the country in this process, the Taliban has never been completely destroyed. After the US withdrawal from Afghanistan in the past years, the Taliban once again took over the administration of Afghanistan. And today the country of Afghanistan is ruled by the Taliban. Since Afghanistan is one of the largest geographies in the south of Central Asia, there are also geographical reasons why the Taliban could not be destroyed for many years. Despite the power of the USA it has a total area of 650 to 1000 square meters, Afghanistan's terrain is among the toughest in the world. There are dozens of high mountains and caves in the country. These mountains are so complex and rugged that once Soviet tanks could not defeat the Afghan warriors behind these mountains. It's not hard to understand how organizations like the Taliban can stay active in a country for years if the military force is not enough. The geographic area is very large and you have unfavorable natural lands. In fact, the Taliban were supported and assisted by states like Pakistan in the 1990s. So, let's take a look at how Afghanistan became a place after the Taliban and what the people there did in their daily lives thus. We will be able to see clearly what the shopkeepers of Afghanistan are selling and what kind of mood they have on their faces. If you go to Afghanistan, just like in Syria, every square kilometer is controlled by the armed forces. This is especially common on the Kabul road. Today, a significant part of the people of Afghanistan live in their capital city, Kabul. It is known that 5 million of 40 million Afghans live in Kabul in the 2021 census in Afghanistan. In addition, 99% of Afghanistan's population consists of Muslims. And 90% of Muslims come from Sunni communities. Also, if you mix with people in the capital city of Kabul, you can see that the people speak Arabic and Turkmen. When you enter the territory of Afghanistan and throw yourself into the streets of Kabul, the first thing you notice is the faces and clothes of the people. 
almost all of them have long beards and wear Afghan barrets. Actually, they are called Pakal. And there are a lot of people in Pakistan who wear these hats. Because these hats identify with the clothes they wear and that's why you see similar combinations. In many Afghans, their clothes are usually long fabric classic Afghan clothes. Here, people do not combine the waist down and the waist up with separate clothes and usually wear this. Style of dress, in other words. There is no concept of trousers, sweaters or shirts in the country and everyone wears the same. Type. Another striking point in Afghanistan is that the majority of the people you see are men and you may not see many women walking around. One think most of the women here migrated to rural areas, away from the Taliban or left the country directly, if you look at the faces of adult men. You can understand that this place is dangerous not only for women, but for almost everyone. You can also see pennants, which the Taliban consider as the flag of Afghanistan, not the official flag of Afghanistan. On the roads and streets almost everywhere, children, as always, are very innocent and sinless. But they are unaware of many things about the situation they are in and at the same time, they do not look happy at all. Their faces are covered with dirt and rust, and almost all of them have a pensive and unhappy expression on their faces. Even before the Taliban, the country's children were not well enough, as if they had aged before they grew up and were living the last years of their lives. Most of them could not go to school, even if they did, they were educated in primitive conditions. However, after the Taliban came to power, girls were expelled from schools and many restrictions were imposed. Now, while girls start housework at a young age, boys start to earn money and find work by helping their fathers. Some children are on their way to becoming fighters for the Taliban from an early age. Therefore, education in Afghanistan is now in a state of collapse. In addition, the Taliban do not approve of Western-style education and training of people. If children want to get an education, they are only allowed to study in religious madrasas controlled by the Taliban. Almost nothing is learned about the civilized world there. And the children are brainwashed and grow up to obey the Taliban. While walking on the roads of Kabul, you can see that people don't usually travel alone. Men march in groups with Taliban flags. There are marches and slogans praising the Taliban, and even dancing in the streets and squares. Camera recording is allowed in Afghanistan. But you have to be very careful when doing this. Because almost every corner is filled with armed people, and there is no force to protect you. If you do something to piss them off. Also, the roads and streets are always crowded and full of people. Despite the Taliban, people are trying to adapt to life and mind their own business. You will see mobile stalls selling various products in almost every street, and many vehicles are in motion on the road when you look at the counters. You can see many products. From this point of view, it is possible to understand that there is no shortage of food in the country. But don't let this mislead you. Most of the people there are unemployed and cannot make a living. While examining the benches, you start to see women from time to time but their faces are not visible at all and when you look carefully, you can say that the view is real. Because you feel as if you have fallen into a primitive place thousands of years before the age you live in. It is compulsory for every woman to wear these clothes, called burqas, when going out. This is an indication that the will of the Afghan society is not consolidated with education. Especially men try to solve the problems caused by their own faults by restricting women as much as possible. They do this by force of arms and by their own rules of law. In other words, they are trying to create a male-dominated society and see women as the servants of men. According to the Taliban, women are only a means of reproduction and were created incompletely from men, in general. They should always be behind men because, according to them, women are dangerous. Women should stay at home and not deal with the outside world. The Taliban do not back down on this issue and say that they act according to Sharia. For example, they cut off the thief's hand or stone the adulterer to death. The justice system in the post-Taliban country is also based on a very primitive system. A man appointed by the Taliban listens to people's problems 
and solves them like a judge. That is, there is no concept of court or civil law. This is how people settle their cases and cannot appeal. If they oppose the decision, armed Taliban soldiers sitting in the next seat intervene in the events. Citizens in Afghanistan, of course, are not satisfied with the Taliban administration and the life they live every day. Thousands of Afghan citizens try to cross the country's borders and flee. These people are mostly young and middle-class men. They want to escape to Iran and reach the gates of Europe via Iran. Of course, the Taliban administration does not open the borders and does not allow the Afghan people to leave. The country, they know very well that if they open the borders, there will be almost no one left in the country but the elderly. Western companies, which financed more than half of the budget of the pre-Taliban Afghan administration, stopped all their activities in the country today. In addition, the international reserves of $10 billion belonging to the Central Bank of Afghanistan were frozen by the World Bank and the Taliban cannot reach this money. Hospitals in Afghanistan are also in a very bad condition. As soon as the Taliban invaded the country, many doctors left the country and went to developed countries. While the remaining doctors try to keep people alive in hospitals with insufficient facilities, the Taliban are not officially recognized. And countries do not send medical drugs and equipment to the Taliban. If humanitarian aid organizations provide these devices and medicines, the sick people there have a chance to live. So much so that many babies in the country get sick. As soon as they are born and unfortunately do not recover, Many of them are struggling with iron and blood deficiency. Afghanistan's roads are as depressing as the hospitals. Most of the roads are unpaved and dusty. There is no public transportation system to take people home. And almost everywhere looks like a neglected village. In addition, there is no traffic light system in the center of Kabul. Vehicles and people mix on the same road and do not move in a certain order. This situation not only causes visual and sound pollution, but also invites life-threatening dangers. Afghan people generally consume meat, lavash, and rice. This is not surprising, because we know very well that people in Central Asia and the Middle East have a meat-based diet. Because these geographies are mostly composed of hard and arid lands, for this reason, Many agricultural products cannot be grown efficiently and abundantly here. As such, people tend to turn to animal husbandry rather than agriculture and do animal husbandry. This paves the way for the meat-oriented development. Of the food culture, there is also a pancake-like food called balani, which people often consume. Stuffed with herbs or potatoes, then thrown into hot oil and eaten. Afghanistan is also famous for its birds. While visiting the cities, you will see caged birds in almost all marketplaces. And these birds are sold and delivered to their new owners. There are Afghans in the mountains, who live a life away from the Taliban and the world agenda. They lead a private life completely isolated from cities, and do not think of escaping to another country. So much so that they stay in traditional chalets made of earth and stone you will not find modern household items in these houses. And there are no carpets or rugs in them. They have a wood-burning stove and they try to hold on to life. With the food they get from the mountains and the animals they keep. They draw clean water from streams and wells. They produce all the food they eat themselves. It is obvious that they lead a very flat life. But at least they keep themselves safer by living in the mountains so they can stay together as a family and keep themselves out of danger. What would you do if you were in Afghanistan? Despite the Taliban rule, do you continue your life by selling products in the bazaars in the cities? Or do you lead a private life in the mountains? Or do you take all the risks and escape from the Taliban and embark on an adventure abroad? Whatever your answer, almost any life in Afghanistan is difficult. A positive development is not expected in the country in the near future. They have not been able to advance with a democratic administration for years anyway. Afghanistan's efforts towards a civilized life in the last 20 years have reached their lowest level with the return of the Taliban. And today the country of Afghanistan is one of the two to three most dangerous countries in the world. 
It seems that life in Afghanistan will not improve for many more years and will continue to be one of the most problematic geographies in the world. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.